G'day folks, Rod Moore here from Moore Art School and welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. I'm glad you can join us this week. Now this week we're going to take a photo which I took when I was in the Capiti Valley. It's a lovely little farmhouse nestled in amongst uh, this large looming uh, cliff face behind it and some nice Australian bush around it. But the photo itself was a little bit gloomy and so our exercise this week is really focused in on how do we take a photo that's not quite right and just bring it to life and give it more life and atmosphere and, and make it a more enjoyable painting. And so that's what we've done here. This is the, uh, the actual painting we're going to do. It's a great little subject. It's pretty easy for pretty much any level to have a go at this one and, and, and achieve a reasonably good outcome with it. And it makes a good little subject. So I know you're going to enjoy this one. Let's have some fun and, and get busy painting. I'll see you there. Okay, let's have a look at our project for today. We're going to do this little scene of uh, a farmhouse in Capity Valley. Got the uh, nice mountain range in the background here. Now, this particular photo, it was fairly overcast and gloomy, as you can see. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to brighten it up. We'll put some blue sky, maybe a little bit of cloud, but we'll, we'll paint in the rest of that mountain, and there's some rocky escarpment on the face here. So we'll paint that in, and we'll just brighten it up a little bit in general. Um, again, you know, not wanting to be a slave to the photo. So I've got a 12 by 16 inch canvas here. Um, tape down to a bit of board. Um, you can use whatever sort of board you like to tape it down to. And we're going to start off as we always do. Step one of the more method is getting in a basic drawing. And we will start step one of the more method. So I'll use a, a little flat brush, a little uh, bristle hair flat brush, ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, as we always do. Get a bit of water. And I'll just um, make up a little mix for drawing with. Okay, so it is important when you do this drawing that you don't get too particular with it. At this stage, we're just finding where everything's going to sit in the painting and um, everything can be adjusted. So if I look for that one third mark, I'm going to make it around about there. It doesn't have to be exact, but that's that sort of horizon line where the um, little farmhouse is sitting. So that farmhouse is going to sit somewhere around about there okay it gives us a little bit of a focal point in the painting but really the main subject is the um you know the the magic majest majesty <laughs> or let's call it magic the magic uh mountain range in the background okay so it's something like that um then we can say okay well there's going to be a we got some trees around here. Again, I'm not going to be a slave to the photo. I'm going to put in trees where I kind of feel that they will best suit the painting. Okay. And then the edge of this rocky escarpment, it comes down around about in line with where the farmhouse is. And we'll run that out to there. And I'll just run that off through there. Okay. And then the rocky escarpment is all in through there. So we'll put in some rocks in through there. There's a, a distant mountain. I'll pop that in really loosely. And that leaves us then, what will we do in the foreground? I might pop another little, um, you know, like a little shed or something over here. Just to... Be a little workshop so we'll have a little something like that in there as well and we'll put some closer trees around that we'll put some close ones around there and um, perhaps we might want a little path I don't know so now you can see I'm, I'm moving away from the painting itself uh, the, the photo itself um, which is perfectly fine to do and then we've got this main gum tree here, which is a different sort of shape to what we normally are used to doing with gum tree. That's more of a spindly kind of fella. Okay, so it's gonna have that sort of effect there. Okay, let's start step two now, the more method. 
and I've just added some more ultramarine blue, lizard crimson, yellow ochre, and our titanium white, so our basic landscape palette. And what I think we're best to do here is to work, uh, to make sure we get our values right. But I'll start with this um, you know, main sort of mountain range here, we'll, and then we'll push that one back, and then we'll come forward and we'll get stronger in our values as we go. So this is going to be a bluey, you know, a gray blue is basically what we're gonna put in here. So a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow, mostly ultramarine blue and white, okay? So, just lighten that back, a bit more blue. Okay, so I'm, as I said, I'm going to move away from the photo. The photo's a little bit too gloomy. I wanna make a, a brighter, happier painting here today some stronger highlights and so on. So we'll move away from the painting, uh, the photo, um, because you know, in the photo, this is just all, almost purely gray. Now that's probably a little bit strong. So I'll just introduce a bit more white in there. Now at this stage, I'm not too worried about my edges and getting that exact, because I know that I can adjust that when I put the sky in. I just want to get that down. Probably a little bit too too dark. So as I come down lower, I'm going to put in more white into that mix, and that'll give it a sort of a misty, hazy feel in the bottom of it anyway. Or in when I say in the bottom, down lower. Okay. So I'll scrub that in. but it's definitely stronger. If I pop that in there now, you can see that it's coming forward of the um, of the mountain range behind it. And that's what we want. So just get random. Now, just a little bit of care around the shapes of those buildings there. Okay, but the rest of it, just get some random sort of edges on the tops of it there. Got a few different colors coming out of the brush, which is good, because I didn't clean the brush. Good, good. Now, I'll pop that brush in the water, and get a clean brush. I could have just cleaned that one, but um, for the sake of uh, time, um, I'll just pick up a new brush. So now we've got this foreground area, and we're going to paint that in using a combination of our red and our yellow. And we're gonna get redder as we come towards the foreground, a little bit lighter at the back. And that's gonna be our underpainting, that earthy tone, underpainting. And I find this works really well when you wanna paint green grasses over the top, which we will be. Um, this creates a really nice ground tone to be able to do that, okay. I'll ignore that tree for the moment. Any foreground trees we'll come back to. Okay. You feel a lot less too with a bigger brush. So that's that done. Okay, good. Now, so that only leaves us then with the sky to block in. And um, what I think I might do, I'm just thinking out loud here, I might put a little bit of sunlight in here to create the effect that it's clipping on the, uh, you know, we can then put highlight on the rock face and on the main gum trees and put all the sunlight on that side. So to get a sunlight sort of effect, we need plenty of white, which I'll put out. Our yellow ochre. Okay, and then a bit of ultramarine blue. I'll take a clean brush for this just to make sure you get clean colour down. Okay, so as you can tell I've got you know half a dozen of these ready to go. In fact here let me show you. Got a pot full of brushes just sitting by the side there. 
um, which I just find that, you know, if I'm doing a bullet, an area of blue, then I can grab a brush and that can be my cool brush and then I can have a warm brush and it just makes the painting process a little bit more efficient as well. Okay, so we're gonna do this sky here. It's gonna be mostly white. Okay, so a big chunk of white, which we'll pop there. And I'm gonna put in some yellow ochre initially. Okay, so see that there? I don't want to mix with that underpaint too much. I probably should have found a clean spot to mix that, but not to worry. Okay, and let's just get some sunlight happening. Actually, we're going to bring that over there a little bit, won't we? Just to make that distant mountain not so tall. Okay, now I'll add more white to that mix and we'll just lighten it up a little bit here and there. Okay, so that creates a definite sort of source of light in the painting. You know, we can tell that the sun's rising over to one side there. And then what we want to do now is, I'll just pull some of that paint out of the brush, is take some white with some blue. Okay, like so. You see that mix there? And let's just fashion that in there. You can see I've still got a bit of yellow in the brush. I don't want too much of it to come out, but I want a little bit to come out. Okay, so that's why I didn't clean my brush. So I'll go for a bit more blue and white. And the yellow is in the in the back of the hairs there. So when I want a little bit of that yellow to come out, I can just turn the brush around and, and just go like that. And then I can mix that in. So it gives us that bit of sunlight in the blue. Okay, and then just dance a little bit of that blue back into there. Careful you don't over mix it because it will go green. Now I think I'll just clean the brush. Yeah, I mean blue and yellow will go green um, if you mix it completely, whereas there, there's not a complete mix. So you get this broken color, which gives a little bit of feel of sunlight in the blue sky there. Let me take the rest of that white, pop that there. Just gonna lighten that value off now. So we got a light blue. And we'll just work that into the top here. Keep that edge broken. Don't make it a hard edge. Okay. And don't leave a hard edge in the sky either. A little bit more blue in there. Just want to have a patch of blue up in that section there. Okay. Step three now, the more method of painting, we're going to get into uh, painting the highlights, the details, finishing touches and the like. And I've just put out my palette, ultramarine blue, lizard crimson, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow light, and some cadmium, uh, some titanium white. Pop that to one side for a moment. What I think we wanna do is get this tree established, which is gonna run from about there. It's gonna run up through the painting. And I think what we'll do is get some dark established for that first. Um, I'll just get a little touch of water on the brush. So we're going to use for that ultramarine blue, lizard and crimson, a touch of the yellow ochre. And the reason why I'm getting this in now is it'll give it a chance to start to dry off by the time we get back around to looking at any of the details for it. Um, so you've got to sort of plan out your painting. Now this is going to run from around about there, I suspect, uh, which means we're going to have the trunk. Don't make it perfectly straight. It's, it's a tree growing in the world there after all. And then as it gets up the top here, it sort of has a number of thinner Okay, 
components to it. We'll run one out through through there. You don't have to make them all solid lines either. Um, make a few of them broken lines. Okay, so it gets that in, get a, a little bit of a start happening with that tree. And what we might also do is, let's grab the fan brush here. Just, I'll take some of that tone. I'll maybe just add a little bit more yellow into it. I'm gonna use this fan brush and just go, okay, we're gonna probably want some foliage on it around about there. Don't worry if the color breaks up a bit like it just did. It's actually a good thing. Okay, a bit hanging there. Where else do we want a little touch of the foliage? We're not gonna overdo the foliage on this one. We wanna let it have plenty of breathing room. Uh, but just, just work that brush around, you know, like give it a swish around. Don't overdo it, but the um, paint there, and you've got just a little, tiny little line of paint, and that, that way I've got not too much paint on here, and when I apply this with just a light pressure and drag it down, the, the tooth on the canvas will pull it off the um, off the palette knife for us. And that's a really nice strong tone there. Now I only want to load just the front half of the brush this time, so I just angle it in so that I only pick up paint on the front half. And wire the front half just so I can get into these little bits in here. Don't want it out in the sky like that. Otherwise, I'm just making my rocks a bit wider, which looks like I'll have to do now. I'll just go with it for there. Okay, now probably that's probably a little bit more than what I wanted. But that's okay because we can correct that. This brush is a little bit skanky, but not to worry. Touch of white in there and a little touch of red just to grab back. Okay, and I'll warm it up a little bit more. And then let's just, a little bit dark. Okay, so what do we do? We add a bit more white and we add a bit more of these yellows in there. Okay, so you can see it's definitely shifted the tone there now. That's probably a bit better. Okay, now I don't want too much paint on the brush here. In fact, what I want to do is get this brush. I don't like that brush. I'll go for this one that's got the hairs all splayed open already. That'll help us do our job. Okay, so don't load the brush with too much paint. That's the thing. Okay, so let's just create the canopy of these, this foliage here. It's probably a little bit bright. I'll just tone it back a little. Just some darker tone. Just by adding a touch more blue into part of the mix. A touch more red. Okay. Just mix that tone up a little, a few other varieties of colors, yellow ochres and loser and crimson in there. Just so we don't have it all the same. So I'll just add some of that in here and there as well. That. So ultramarine blue and a little bit more 
of the um, cad yellow light and a pinhead of the red. I'm always adding pinhead of the red for anything in this sort of middle distance. Why am I doing that, you might ask? Because um, I want to grey that colour back. I don't want it to be fully saturated. Okay, because it's in the distance. So colours aren't as saturated in the distance. Now look at that, that's a lovely tone and that's mixed so well with that underpainting as well. If I went too bright back there, it wouldn't look right, it'd pop forward too much. We'll go for a brighter green down the bottom here, right? But for now, we'll just stick with... So you can see that, there's no white in that. I haven't grayed it back as much. And look how much darker it is. So I'll just darken it back a little bit just to create the transition. And I'll vary up my brush strokes. And see, with that glow of that red coming through, it's tying in. And that creates harmony and, you know, a, a sense of unity in a painting. Vary those brush marks, don't keep them all the same. Just patch a yellow through there. Okay, now so I'm gonna my palette's just gonna be off camera for a second while I just get this in. I wanna work fairly quickly because you know it's acrylic and it's under hot lights here for the studio. So they uh, the paint's drying out quickly. But rest assured that I'm just using variations of a theme there. The uh, ultramarine blue, yellow ochre. Lizard and Crimson and Cad Yellow Light with the white. Okay, now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go more blue and more Cad Yellow Light, and we'll just get that in. That's a bit dark, which we want the dark sort of more in the foreground here. But I'll just introduce a little patches of it here and there. I'm going to get in some shadow tone first on this building. So blue and the red and the white. Okay, that's going to sit in there. Actually, I'm probably paying the shadows out the wrong way. Let me fix that. I need a darker shadow on that side. Presumably that's going to get more light. In fact, what we'll do, we'll make it partly in light. That'll be better. So if I just come in here, because the light's coming from up here, then this wall here isn't going to be receiving any light. So we'll just... Run that out like so. Run the shadow there. Okay. Now to uh, make sure it's seeable, we'll just get a touch of the white, grey it back. Like so. finger and a little roof's red so I've changed the shape of the cottage you know just to make it a simpler shape in here for you um, to make it easier if you get the photo reference and you want to try it the way it actually is by all means do that you know it's um it's not a problem so I've just got a lizard and crimson a bit of white and I mix it in with that blue shadow tone so it's not too bright I just wanted to uh, tone it back a bit if it's not bright enough when we, when we put it up here, then I could always just uh, go for a brighter tone. 
Now again, you could use a brush for this. I've just been wanting to experiment more with the palette knife of late. Always got to be growing and learning. In fact, I'll put part, put it in partly with the brush and partly with the palette knife. How about that? <laughs> well, it'll work for me, put it that way. Um, so where's the brush? Okay, let's pop a little bit of highlight into this path here. Just going to get a little bit orange. So just um, yellow ochre, lives in crimson and, uh, and some titanium white. I don't want to completely painted out though. I want to leave plenty of that underpainting there. Like so. Which make that colour a bit richer. Bit of character to them. And I reckon that's about where we're gonna leave it. Um, it's turned out not a bad little painting. Good little representation of uh, Capity Valley, little house I found there and stopped to take a photo. And I've painted it a few times and um, every time I paint it, it turns out a little bit different, which I think is one of the joys of painting. You can come back to the same subject time and time again and always, you know, get a different result if you want. Um, but yeah, I think this one's come out pretty well. I'll sign this one. And um, as I've been doing lately with the Learn to Paint TV episodes is popping them up on eBay. Only because I accumulate too many paintings. And um, pop them up on eBay for uh, auction. And if you're smart, you can pop over there and you might pick up one for a bargain. So let's have a look and see. So here's our original photo. As I said, it was a little bit gloomy for my liking and I didn't like that center tree and so on. So we made a few changes and uh, this is what we've ended up with. And um, I'm quite happy with that as a little demo painting. I think it um, captures the feel and the essence of Capity Valley with the big hill in the background and the um, light on the escarpment with this sunlight over here. And uh, yeah, it's got a nice little feel to it. It's definitely a painting that would be worth you having a go at. It'll teach you a lot about landscape painting. Um, you know, and uh, there's always a lot to learn, of course, but this particular painting will, uh, if you can get this one close, then you'll be on your way to becoming a good landscape painter. So have a go at this one, um, and make sure you drop by our websites at learntopaint.tv for all the other episodes of Learn to Paint TV, and also Learn to Paint Academy. So that's learntopaint.academy. If you pop by there, um, you can see all the different courses and trainings that we have. It'll help you become a better artist and uh, paint like this. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I've certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. I look forward to seeing you next time on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.